So that's something I feel very strongly about. The second thing I feel very strongly about is to constantly connect the, the, the lab to the biology concept and to the real world application. So don't ever um, you know, forget to show them what the real world application is. In other words, always bear in mind that question of why should the student learn about this? Why should the student um, uh, learn this technique or uh, you know, hear about it or do it in the lab? What's, what's the point, right? And so then if we uncover these two things, then we get to the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is that we want to at least, at least expose students to biotech careers. Right? Even if we can't get them into one, we want to expose them to the biotech careers so that they know uh, that they are there. The problem with biotech careers is, uh, and this is why I created this um, presentation, and I'm going to actually create a workshop around it, is that it's very difficult to talk about biotech careers in a simple, straightforward manner. Right. So if somebody asks you, um, or, or, or if you talk to a student and you tell them, oh, you like medicine, you can be a doctor or a nurse. Pretty straightforward. No further explanation required, right? <laughs> they, they know what that means. Uh, or you, you're, you can be a teacher, or you can be an engineer, or you can be an architect. It's very straightforward. But when you tell them biotech, how, what does that mean, right? Very often to a student, it means you need to be super smart, right? Have a PhD and be a research scientist. And that's the problem we want to overcome, okay? That is only one very small niche in biotech. But I will show you now what the current biotech landscape is and why it's so important to expose students to careers well beyond that. Because those are the ones that are in demand that we want to train the workforce uh, for. Okay? So with that said, um, I want to show you what the current biotech landscape is. It has dramatically, dramatically changed in the last two years. And the dramatic change had a big impact on everything we do, especially on education, on biotech education. Then I want to um, show, give you an overview of the biotech tech domains to uh, drive home the message that biotechnology touches every single aspect of our life to even the genes that your students wear. Okay? Uh, and so it's not just about medicine. Um, then I uh, will give you a quick overview of uh, just some slides that you could use alone if you don't have time to do the lab to introduce this topic. Then I'll give you an overview of scientific versus non-scientific biotech careers for students who you know, may opt to, to be in the non-scientific field. And then I will show you this big platform that covers all these topics on the bottom, the job areas, the companies, the uh, um, job boards, and the education pathways. So, um, oops. Okay, so let's take a look at the current landscape. So one very big event was in September, this past September, when the Biden administration issued this executive order on advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing innovation for you know the rest of what's on the slide. So they have many goals that you are going to see if you click on the uh, word executive order. But one of those goals is here. That uh, I just picked the goal that relates to us the most, which is to train a diverse skilled uh, workforce, address the shortages we have, because we have much more demand than supply uh, in the biotech industry, to make sure that the workforce we're training spans all levels, and that it includes students from the community college to the graduate uh, level, right? And then we want to, of course, uh, expand the training and education opportunities, and then uh, focusing on uh, equity, uh, racial and gender equity, which you know is very big today, and uh, supporting the development of uh, talent in underserved communities. Uh, our program focuses on both the underserved communities, but also communities in which STEM education is underrepresented, because th these are not always the same thing, right? Um, so. So that's in line. So you can look it up when you have time. Uh, here you have some numbers and so on. I'm not going to read at you, obviously, but I just want to point out something very important. Los Angeles always was lagging behind, right? When you thought of Los Angeles as you were growing up, what were the industries that come to mind? <laughs> Sorry? Hollywood, exactly. Hollywood. Okay, I won't go into that <laughs> now, but apparently I hear from you know some people I know that are 
uh, partly in the business that it's not uh, the same anymore because most of the filming happens outside LA altogether because it's become so expensive. Oh, so, right now, too. <laughs> like the writers were talking about the actors last night, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. oh. There's two strikes happening in Hollywood right now. Oh, okay. I didn't even know. There you yeah. go. It's bad. Okay. Bad to be in Hollywood right now. <laughs> and the other thing was real estate. You never heard the word biotech industry in conjunction with LA, right? So now, so where was all the biotech? In the Bay Area and in San Diego. So now this has changed. So we have doubled the number of companies at San Diego, and we are all a little bit behind the Bay Area, but catching up. There is a report you can look up. The Bay Area is also where Genentech is, which is, by the way, the company that uh, cloned the human insulin first and got the FDA approval to use it as a biotech product in the early 80s. Uh, and these reports are also on my um, handout. All right, so what we want to do now is to raise awareness among all stakeholders for all these opportunities in the biotech industry. And I want to show you, my, my goal is to show you that the career opportunities in the biotech industry are multidisciplinary, multidimensional. They require all sorts of degrees, right? And you can get these degrees in, in, from many different um, institutions, okay, and many different programs. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute. But first, um, I want to focus on the education pathways that prepare students for employment. So that's very important. Uh, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with all this. So how many of us know about career technical education? Okay, how, did you, are you in a school that has career? Okay. Okay. Is biotech one of your career uh, technical education programs? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how about you become an ambassador for that? Right? You could become an ambassador for that, right? Okay, so then we have the work-based learning. Um, I don't know if your school has counselors maybe or department that helps students with work-based learning. Um, so that's another. Uh, then there is dual enrollment. Uh, do you have any dual enrollment courses in your school? You do, but in biotech or in no. other? No. Okay. How about you become the no. uh, resident <laughs> expert in uh, the dual enrollment uh, uh, course? So d does everybody know what dual enrollment is? No. Okay. So I'll tell you. I taught in one in May. So dual enrollment are these programs, and actually if Joe was here, she could have told you about Fullerton College. They have it there. They have a very successful dual enrollment program. It, and they have stackable credentials, both. So these, the dual enrollment is when you offer, uh, uh, um, in our case, a biotech course after the bell rings. I know this sounds simplistic, but literally it's based on the bell schedule. So after the bell rings and the students are out of school, you find a way to bring these students to a biotech lab Usually, uh, these programs run uh, in the nearest uh, uh, community college or a university, okay? So the students get bused after the, the, the bell rings, uh, or perhaps maybe even on a weekend, but most of the programs I know are after school, to a lab, uh, where, to a biotech lab in a nearby academic institution, uh, where they do something similar to what you did. They cover a program similar to what you did. Uh, in some cases, they let the students sign up, okay? In other cases, uh, they take students who have, uh, based on grades and performance and stuff like that, or, or the courses let that in. Um, so these programs are very, um, um, uh, you know, successful for students who are really looking to prepare for employment because they give them that opportunity while they are in high school uh, as juniors or seniors. And then at the end, they get a, uh, the college credit. Mm -hmm. So this is why these courses are run at community colleges or, um, or, or universities. And um, again, Joe has um, one uh, at Fullerton. Uh, but we have them in many different places. I taught in one in May at Compton, Compton College. Yes. Who pays for the cost? Yeah, that's a good question. Who pays? No, not the teachers or the schools. The, the grants. They have grants and funds. Yeah, they have grants and funds that pay for that. And again, the Biden, the, 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 that initiative by the Biden administration has, of course, poured a ton of money into these pathways. Stackable credentials are very popular today. When I say very popular, a lot of employers uh, look at them very favorably. So that's when the student can get, for example, a six-week training, uh, or, or like a summer boot camp, or a six-week training, like the Biotech Academy that I teach in. 
and then they go and they get a one-year certificate or a two-year associate degree, okay? Uh, but they get these certificates and degrees in different sub-disciplines of biotech, right? So it could be, for example, a boot camp in biotech in general, but then they go and get a certificate in tissue culture, you know? Um, uh, so that would be a stackable, uh, you know, um, uh, stackable credential. Uh, then, of course, equity and inclusion um, are at the core of all this because uh, we want to overcome the historical patterns of exclusion um, that, you know, impacted the learning outcomes, the participation, and the employment of uh, certain groups, the minority groups that are underrepresented in STEM. So, so these, you know, are important things for you to keep in mind. And again, you can always be the uh, leader <laughs> in this, in, in this uh, field. Um, uh, we have, oh, so in terms of um, the latest um, statistics, twen about 20% um, of the community colleges, um, uh, community college students um, attending these career technical uh, programs uh, have uh, AS degrees or BS degrees. We have a community of practice here in the LA area, you know, where um, uh, the, the, the faculty and teachers and other stakeholders collaborate on uh, best practices. Um, we as a program, of course, um, continue to uh, support these initiatives and train the teachers and provide the kids and so on. Um, so that shows you another. There is uh, the Pasadena. Uh, <laughs> Uh, site uh, should know that the Pasadena Bioscience Collaborative has a partnership with the community colleges and they are really working together hand in hand on making sure that in this year we're going to be able to provide more technicians that are well trained and skilled to be employed. Um, so and they have an approved curriculum um, and uh, you know they're trying to uh, close that gap that we have right now. Uh, between the jobs that are available and uh, the, the skilled workforce. So, so this is just you know, a very quick overview to show you what's going on in the biotech landscape. I think it's important for you to know the background so that when you um, do these uh, activities with the students, you can tell them about the opportunities out there and uh, you know, what, 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 what's going on in terms of employment. So then, as I mentioned, my goal is to create a workshop around this um, eventually. So I was thinking for those of you who cannot, for example, conduct any of the labs in fall. Let's say you start the school year and you're really excited about this program, uh, but you cannot conduct the, you know, the, the labs for whatever reason right away. You can um, start by, uh, uh, sorry. you can start by, um, by giving the students uh, an overview of the, of the careers. And I th one way that I do it with students who don't have a background on biotech is by asking them what biotechnology is, right? And then showing them what um, the real world applications are of biotechnology. So those are slides I put there that you can um, use. Uh, and you can really use them with any level of students, you know? So, because in the Biotech um, Academy, I also get adult learners and career transitioners that come from non-scientific careers. You know, I, I created these um, slides that, you know, can, can fit um, any type of student. Uh, but also for you, I just wanted to remind you again that although we keep focusing on medical biotech here for our purposes, because we keep going back to insulin and recombinant proteins, and you also saw what Griffiths does, right? Uh, don't forget that there are, there's uh, agricultural biotech, where we genetically modify plants and animals. It's a very big field. There's environmental biotech, where we genetically modify microbes to clean up the environment, bioremediation, and to do other things. Um, uh, we also have forensic biotech that I mentioned in conjunction with PCR, you know, for uh, crime scene analysis, paternity uh, testing, and so on. And by the way, for example, the use of PCR or DNA fingerprinting for crime scene analysis and in the courtroom has revolutionized society. So you can also use some of these you know, applications to uh, make the connection between um, uh, uh, society and science, right? Um, 
there, there are there is a ton of information on that, and if you reach out to me, I can give you some uh, you know, some resources. And then there is uh, one field that's less popular because it kind of gets I don't know shoved under the carpet, which is industrial biotech. Those are all the companies that genetically modify uh, proteins that mainly act as enzymes in industrial processes. And as I was trying to tell you, these processes span the entire, um, you know? Uh, for like, sorry, yeah. I'm yes. for the, uh, would you put those companies right now that, you know, like the 23andMe, that, that sequence DNA to see your ancestry and all yes. those companies? So those I put um, on a separate, I, I don't have them in this slideshow, but I do refer to them. I'm glad you um, mentioned them. But so the these companies, industry, right? yeah, th those are different, so this 23 and me and so on. So those just sequence your DNA, right? Yeah, yeah and they're very, they, they have a lot of issues associated with them. So, but yeah, but so I wouldn't, right? it's an industry, yeah. So this is like a service sector, right, where you pay a fee. Uh, you give them your sample, they analyze your DNA, and then they tell you what your ancestors, who your ancestors are. But they can also tell you what your predisposition is for genetic disease. Uh, you have to think about that. You're giving away your DNA to someone, yeah. right? Do you really yeah. want to do that, <laughs> right? So, uh, so I don't want to get into that, but it's not here. Good, I'm glad you asked that question. They, they would not be represented here. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of problems more than that. But there's a lot, there's of, a lot of problems with that, because yeah. So um, the industrial, just to go back to industrial biotech, I wanted to point out that these are um, mainly recombinant proteins and enzymes, very exactly the same, uh, the, using the same processes you know to produce insulin, but they are used for industrial processes. Like what? Uh, um, uh, clean energy, uh, making paper, uh, making textiles, um, remo making even um, detergents like uh, you know, like uh, detergents that or or what you call it, liquids that will remove stains, you know, that have these enzymes uh, that have been genetically modified uh, to do these um, tasks. Then, of course, if you want to do a real world connection to COVID, you could take the first field, the medical biotechnology field, and then um, show them how um, uh, the biotech companies. Um, were basically running a marathon during the pandemic to test for COVID, to prevent COVID from spreading, and to treat COVID, right? So we have the, the diagnostic tests, right? Which, like the RT-PCR. We have the uh, vaccines that eventually came out after the first year. And then we have the treatments where they either innovated new treatments or they repurposed biotech drugs um, for COVID treatment. Um, all right, so this is another slide that covers the same thing in a different way, depends what you like better. Um, they, they kind of list the domains in a different way. But both slides are missing two things, and I want you to know about those because those are areas that are hiring a lot, okay? I want to start with the digital health. This is now, uh, goes under biotechnology. This uh, became more important during the pandemic. And this is where they combine the digital technology and the app technology with um, health care, basically, right? So those are those wearable devices that can monitor your heart rate, can monitor your blood sugar, right? Um, some of them are also devices that can go under the skin and administer um, the medication, right? Uh, tele, what, what did they call it? I don't have it up here. Tele, tele what? Telehealth. Telehealth, yeah, uh, during the pandemic. So that all goes under uh, digital health. They have now a fancy name for digital health, which is MedTech. Um, and um, there are some trade organizations here in LA um, that uh, support these new companies in MedTech. And of course, many of them are small uh, startup companies. Then we go get to the biomedical device industry. So I have a few slides just on that industry for uh, uh, one main reason, <laughs> because this industry has a lot to offer and is always looking for skilled uh, workforce. Uh, it's very, it's, you know, um, very, um, uh, it's a very fast growing industry and they're, you know, um, always looking for uh, skilled workers. Uh, the industry itself is very multidisciplinary. I listed some of the things that they cover. So you're going to uh, hear about regenerative medicine, um, 
by Jacqueline, who I'll introduce her later. She'll tell you about internship opportunities. There are also these CAR T cells, I don't know if you heard about them, um, that we use uh, in cancer therapy. There is the CRISPR technology that everybody talks about, which is genome editing. Uh, all this falls under the biomedical device industry. I have a link that shows you the companies uh, in, uh, in California, in all of California, uh, that are considered biomedical uh, device industries. So the interesting thing about this industry is not just that they're growing and hiring, but that they are looking for skilled technicians who have a background in all these disciplines. So why? Because the industry itself is very multidisciplinary. So uh, it, it has the biotech overlapping the IT department, basically, overlapping the biomedical device part, and the nanotechnology. You know, so you need chemistry, physics, biology, engineering, um, nanotechnology, you know, um, their tissue culture, and so on for that industry. So many, many um, disciplines that uh, your students could get training in, depending on what they like and what they're uh, good at. All right, so then if you were to uh, um, cover career exploration as a standalone, you know, I put some slides here, oh, obviously I'm not gonna go <laughs> over this with you, but just some slides here that would allow you to get to the point uh, of introducing to them the concept of genetic engineering, you know? So, and of course, you can modify as much as you want, but I thought you could do this as a standalone activity if you were pressed for time and you couldn't, you're not prepared to do labs yet. Right. Um, so, and, and you know, the, the, the slides, the visual, of course, um, you know, simplifies it so that they can see everything in front of them and don't have to read much. And there is a video here. Um, again, I won't play it. It's like a two-minute animation that shows them the history of producing uh, insulin, human insulin, using bacteria. So it's a very simple. And then, if you want to link it to uh, COVID and the pandemic. You can use these slides where um, they show you how they develop the vaccines using um, the RNA of the virus or the sequence of the RNA of the virus, um, and you can see how you know the body makes antibodies that can then selectively bind um, the virus. So that's just you know to show them a different. Uh, so now we switch gears to the careers. So obviously we have the scientific careers, right? Um, again, I'm not going to read the slide. But um, bioinformatics um, came up today and maybe another time during the workshop. Uh, that's where they combine the IT, right, the computer technology with biology. Again, that's very high in demand. You know, that's those, those are the people who, cre um, who uh, analyze DNA and RNA sequences and protein sequences. Uh, they, first of all, they sequence the molecules. They store the sequence. They analyze it. Um, they work with databases. So that could be also you know, a career opportunity for students who have a strong IT background or are interested in that but do not want to work in a wet lab. You know? mm -hmm. And then, of course, there are students who don't want that at all. They want the opposite. They want to work in a wet lab, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, And then these are the requirements you know, for a career, a scientific career in biotech. Uh, you know, all these things, but I added artificial intelligence. Right, and Joe, I think, had mentioned that, or who was it? It was mentioned today and yesterday. Artificial intelligence is very important. So then we get to the non-scientific careers, and I wanna really stop here for a minute, because you may have a lot of students who are not good in science or don't feel like investing their time in education pathways uh, in science, uh, but they are interested in these non-scientific careers, right? So they could get hired in the biotech industry, but the key here is that if they get a biotech degree or training or boot camp or credential, they'll be much more employable, right? Mm -hmm. So they can enter at a higher level, they'll be much more employable, and they probably will enjoy their job much more, right? Because they will at least understand what the industry is about, you know, even if they don't have the hardcore science and, you know, um, so, um, all right, so how can students improve their employability? We have a, lot, a big list here, a long list, right? 
networking is very important. Um, and being a curious lifelong learner, of course, and then working on their personal and professional skills, uh, maintaining high standards, integrity, professionalism, and I want to highlight that these uh, things are hard to find now in the new generation. Uh, we have uh, uh, we, we have experienced this firsthand because we were hiring, um, and we saw you know that it's not easy to find these. Um, uh, characteristics of, so, or um, uh, employability skills. At the bottom of the list, I have uh, soft skills. Why? Because now the soft skills are have become so critical, and any HR person, anywhere you, your student is going to send a resume or a cover letter, they're going to have to show their soft skills, right? And so, these are all the basic soft skills, you know, that you are probably familiar with. Um, again, I don't want to be reading slides. <laughs> um, uh, teamwork and collaboration is very important, so that's something you can work on by having them work uh, in, in teams and collaborative projects. But in addition to the soft skills we're all familiar with, there are these soft skills that became much more critical recently, and especially during the pandemic. Again, uh, artificial intelligence, you know, uh, thinking outside the box, adaptive thinking and flexibility, um, adaptability to new technologies. They have, you know, we constantly see how um, computer technologies and app technologies and even our cell phones uh, technologies um, change. Uh, then the service-oriented mentality, meaning that you have to um, accept the fact that you have some customer service aspect to your job. <laughs> um, so, and uh, you know, be able to. Uh, work well with your co-workers and that's when emotional intelligence um, you know comes in mm, so that's also being highlighted a lot um, you don't you know employers or even us when we interview we look for that we don't want to just see the accomplishments and the degrees and the certificates we want to see how the person can work with other people and be able to um, as a people's person and be able to you know, uh, acknowledge their emotions, manage their emotions, uh, not be reactive in the workplace, uh, and so on. There is a, um, I have an emotional intelligence quiz link here that you could share with your students. I think they'll enjoy doing that. Uh, it's a very empowering skill, you know. And probably, I don't know if your school is part of the social emotional learning, mm -hmm. yeah? So, so you know, I. Didn't get a chance to tell you that, but you know I'm a facilitator for anti-bias education programs at the Museum of Tolerance. And so we work a lot with teachers who do their professional development as part of that, the social emotional learning and um, anti-bias uh, pedagogy and creating inclusive environments and you know equity and inclusion <laughs> and diversity. And so uh, they do part of the training at the museum. Yeah, so you know, these, um, uh, skills are becoming more and more important uh, because unfortunately you get the students in the classroom who don't have these skills. Um, so, so those are power skills. So last but not least, how can you help your students uh, prepare for a life science or biotech career? So I like to look at it this way. There is the formal education, right? There are the technical skills or the experience that the student can show, and then the soft skills that we just covered, right? And so for formal education, again, it is so important that you help your students understand that biotechnology is not about having a PhD, right? <laughs> or going to an Ivy League university, right? You can uh, be very successful in biotechnology and not do that. Uh, and actually, you saw, you saw an example, Willy, Willy Zuniga, you know? Willie Zeringa went to Cal State LA. Uh, he doesn't, I don't even think he has a degree in biotech at all. And, uh, you know, he was the CEO, or he became the CEO of Griffles, one of the very big companies, right? Mitzi? Yes. You want to share? Yeah, he became uh, CEO of Griffles. He got his graduate degree at Cal State LA, and this year he obtained his PhD. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. after becoming a CEO and retiring. From being a CEO. <laughs> So yeah. thanks for students. Yeah. <laughs> so, and also, you, you have a lot of um, reports. I'll show them to you. Um, I mean, um, not sorry, links to reports 
uh, by trade organizations and the resources I gave you. And if you look at them, you're going to see uh, in percentage, you know, uh, uh, what the percentage is of people who get employed who do not have PhDs. And in LA in particular, you will see that there are more, uh, there is more demand for skilled workforce that is not, doesn't have graduate degrees uh, than, than graduate degrees, right? And so um, here you have a breakdown of the, um, of the possibilities, right? After graduation, after high school graduation. Uh, for example, LA, um, uh, uh, no, not the, um, East LA, East LA College has a summer boot camp biotechnology bootcamp, uh, and we have the workforce training that I told you about. Um, there is a link here for internships in industry and academia. Uh, it actually gives you, a, it's like a blog that shows you how you can find an internship in industry and academia, and it's on your resource handout. This is the, um, the let me see how I'm gonna do that, the platform that uh, Jo showed you on her, uh, Website. How do I do that? But, uh, okay. So, so yeah. Okay. Here we go. So I have to exit. I just. How do I show you the escape? Okay, and then. About the system here. Oh, there we go. So if you take a look here, it's a huge, huge platform. You almost need a course <laughs> to learn how to use it. Um, so what I did is I put it on the slides and then I created that blog, that, that guide that I gave you on how to use it. And so, um, you know, you see, you can, let, let me show you. Let me show you. Um, let me show you one by one. I'll just show you so that you get a flavor of how it's organized. So if we take a look at careers, right, uh, you can actually just skip and go to entry level jobs and they have about, um, uh, I don't know how many, 33 or more entry level jobs. The beauty is that they are organized in alphabetic order. You can see that here. And then when you click on one of them, on any one of them, right, what happened? Yeah, there we go. They will give you a description of the job, right, uh, area, and they will also tell you everything you need to know. So they will tell you what the um, uh, education is, uh, what education is required, um, how much you can make, uh, how much you can expect to make if you get a higher degree, and so on. Um, and then they have, so that's the careers, uh, job area, sorry. They have the blogs um, that cover many different topics, but then they have the people. So remember how we were talking about you know, virtual tours of companies and so on? Um, there are links to virtual tours, but tours, but there are also um, these um, you know, people here that are employed by the industry, and if you click uh, on it, you will read, their, um, you know, read about their uh, day on the job. And then they have interviews with them. Uh, yeah, actually here on this one, on alumni profile, you should be able to see an interview with them. And most of them are talking in their own uh, workspace. So I just don't know how to, why is it not? It's supposed to be a video. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe, okay. But when you click, I don't know. I can't get the video to run, but it's supposed to be a video. Um, all right, so that's one um, one thing. Oh, and then here maybe the videos are diff. Yeah, I don't know. No, 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 no. They're supposed to be under profiles. You will see in my blog. You know, uh, you will see how to get to it in my blog. Then the beauty, the, the other amazing uh, thing about this uh, platform, and I have not yet seen any platform like that is that they have the, this uh, option. You can click on the map, on any, um, uh, on any location on the map, and then you'll be able to get all the companies in that location um, in alphabetic order, okay? So if I click on LA, I can see all the companies in <coughs> alphabetic order in LA, but then, let's do that here, let's do California, for example. 
and then you can um, uh, doesn't want to go. Then you can look at them up by um, by business area. So I'm not sure why. Maybe I'll go to the table. It's usually allows you. So it allow if you go to the table, you will see them in alphabetic order this way. But if you go to the map, why does it not allow? It's just a little slow. You think so? Okay, yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, thank God. Okay, all right. <laughs> Because I want to show you when you go to, and let's go to uh, Los Angeles, for example, right? You can um, uh, put your settings here. So you can see whether or not these companies will hire, um, uh, you can, I mean, select companies that will hire co community college students. You can uh, get career information. You can even select the companies that offer internships. You can look at them by business area, you know? So for example, you could go to COVID-19, and see all the ones that do um, work related to COVID-19. Um, so, you know, it's hard to, for me to show it to you from here, but you, you, I think you, you know, once you follow the instructions, you'll be able to, to see them. Are, is anybody working on it now? Okay, you, you're able to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So that's an amazing part of this uh, platform. It also has uh, the credentials that uh, Joe was talking about. So you would be able to find in the pathways, in the academic pathways, uh, these certificates that uh, students can get. Uh, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, how do I get back? Um, let me get out of here. Okay. So, so let me show you what you can do. So for example, the activity I have, okay. Okay, where am I? Okay, so let's go back again so nobody's lost. So this is what you can do on the platform, okay? So these are the things that I was clicking on in the, on the platform. Uh, the alumni profile is great because they can relate to these young individuals, you know? They're very close in age to high school students. And then this is the interactive um, database that I showed you, the interactive map. And uh, the, by the way, the, num the, highest, um, the states with the highest number of biotech are California, Massachusetts, and recently Texas. It used to be California and Massachusetts, and in recent uh, years, in the last decade or, or, decade or so, uh, Texas picked, you know, have caught up. Um, what else? <clears throat> yeah, I showed you the business areas. Okay. So. If you go back here, no, where is it? Sorry. Okay. okay. So then, if you um, go to the handout, the handout has the student activity where they can actually use this platform. Uh, to uh, uh, find out about all the criteria that are on the activity. Innovate Bio is the National Biotechnology Center. You should know about that because it has a ton of resources. So it has all the college programs that prepare students for employment. It has um, uh, the K-12 schools listed that have biotech uh, uh, experiences. Uh, it has all, it's funded by this ATE program that's part of NSF. Uh, but if you uh, go to this um, link here, you'll be able to look up all these um, education pathways, whether it's um, a certificate, a one-year degree, a two-year degree, or a bachelor and master's. Okay. So, and by the way, you can look them up by location. So they do have um, a search a search criteria where you can look them up by location, by geographic location. If you go to LA County, we, I, I gave you here an update. Um, so we have, a here you have a list of colleges with biotech certificates and degrees. And then uh, we have the ones that just started this year. So for example, Santa Monica just started this semester. 
uh, with a biotech um, um, course that's going to be part of their uh, degree program, uh, the same thing as with these other colleges. And then we have two colleges that applied for a bachelor degree at the community college. So all this is a result of the Biden uh, uh, administration initiative and the money and the funding that the colleges have um, received. So for example, Mitzi uh, was trained at LA Mission College, but Mitzi finished before uh, LA Mission College got the approval to run a bachelor degree program in biomanufacturing. But she was trained by my colleague, Dr. Chandra Aurora. Aurora, right? And you were there for one year, or you did both, right? Um, uh, do you want to come and tell them quickly? Come. Oh. <laughs> Mitzi is our most recent hi. Yeah. Come. Hi. So, uh, does it anywhere? Yeah. Okay, so um, I took biotech the, um, last year, in the fall of 2022. So originally, that was not my career.